Hi everybody, Steve Scott here, and this video is about what we do at Welcome At in our uh, typical training session. Now again, there's no typical training session, but we follow a common pattern of training, a kind of a methodology we've used for many years that's been successful for us. And we're cutting this video not out of vanity or anything else, but I've had a really a surprising number of uh, people asking me, like, you know, what's a normal workout for you guys? So, you know, what do you do in your practices? Uh, so we cut this video, and it took a bit of time and editing and so on to get this done because we want to do it as, as, as well as I possibly could to give you an idea or flavor of what goes on on the mat in one of my in our particular case right now a, a typical Thursday night a regular Thursday night practice at the Welcome Mat Training Center. Now what you're going to see uh, is is a pattern that is also followed by Ken Brink in his junior program. He also has seniors at our other Welcome Mat location, our Welcome Mat Judo Club. And we follow really a, a, like five parts to a workout. And I've done this for a long time. And it, it, it gives me a structure, but also gives me good flexibility within that structure. It gives me a lot of freedom of movement. So I'll explain it real quick here, and then we'll watch the video here in a bit. Um, first of all, we, we start with a bow-in. We always have a formal bow-in in some type where we, we uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's how you get together. You know, and, and every, every time people get together, there's some kind of a structure that where we greet each other. And in, in our case, the martial arts, certainly judo, sambo, jiu-jitsu, well, judo and jiu-jitsu, not so much sambo, we start with a, a bow in, okay? So we'll do that. And then part of that will be our warm-up phase, which will include our break falls. And when I was coaching kids a lot, sometimes we do with adults, we do a lot of, um, you know, like cartwheels and round offs, that type of thing. In addition to the, the more uh, traditional or the more, the more regular type type of ukemi that one associates with judo or jiu-jitsu and we'll do that then that'll go right into the next phase okay by the way we also want to do some stretching but it's all functional stretching that's the importance of a very functional very practical approach to stretching we're not training to be gymnasts we're training to be uh, martial arts people you know judo sambo jiu-jitsu people so the, the, the training, the uh, stretching is relative to what we're supposed to be doing, okay? Re very relevant, okay? The next phase, uh, phase number two, is drill training. And that encompasses a wide variety of things. And let me say here right up front that I think every practice is one drill followed by another logically, and they're linked together somehow. Uh, a good practice is just a series of drill training. It's, it's a drill training session the whole time, you know, the time you're there. Uh, the, we normally on a Thursday night practice is about a two-hour workout. And so the next phase will be our drill training. And that, that includes our, our ground drills, transition drills, our throwing drills, which will include, you know, grip fighting, uchikomi, throwing on the crash pads, uh, newaza randori, um, skill drills, situational drills and newaza and standing, uh, all kinds of, of drills. We'll be doing them. And I try to, uh, you know, I try to mix the drills up and it, from, for every practice to keep pr every practice interesting, something a little bit different, that, you know, so they don't get stale. So no practice is stale. You, when, when the athletes show up you know, on any given night, they know they're gonna get a good workout and they know there's gonna be a pattern to it, but within that pattern, it's gonna be something different just about every time, okay? But again, there is a structure to it. So the, the second phase is the drill training, and that's, that's a really key part of it. We do a lot of our, our, some of our instruction within that drill training phase too. And that leads right into a more of a teaching phase. Uh, and we'll usually have some kind of a teaching situation. Uh, now in the video you're gonna see here, uh, the teaching phase was when we were actually working on a particular situational drill on you know, controlling, you know, doing a rodeo ride, hooking with the, the legs and the hands on the opponent. And we were doing that a little bit. I didn't do a lot of teaching in this particular video you're gonna see. Uh, but it, that's where some of the teaching did come in. But we may just also have, you know, at a, at a practice where we'll say, okay, let's work on this technique, and we'll we'll break off that period of time for working on that technique. And we take, you know, no more than probably 10 minutes uh, to, to, you know, eight to 10 minutes to show the move and to really get it down and come back and revisit that move and and then give them a good period of time after that to practice it. When I say them, I mean the students. So that, that, that's the third phase 
of a, um, a typical workout. Okay, so we've got you know, bow in, warm up type of thing, uh, ukimi. That's one number one. Number two would be the drill training, and number three would be the teaching phase. Um, and sometimes it that blends right into the drill training, like I said. And then our, our last phase, our fifth phase of our workout generally, is a, is a cooling down period. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, take the back, we go to Rondori next. Pardon me, my, my, my error. We go to Rondori. There's some type of Rondori we do. Rondori means free practice. And that, so, so we, we may have in a situation where maybe somebody's injured or maybe somebody, uh, for whatever reason, doesn't want to Rondori or cannot Rondori. Um, so, so that'll be kind of an open time. They can do other things. They can, you know, it's, it's free period, basically what that means. We usually set aside about 30 minutes or more for our Rondori session. And Rondori is always structured. There's always a purpose to it. And we always have a reason for whatever type of Rondori we're doing that night. And there are different types of Rondori drills that we do. And we usually run about, like you'll see in the video here, we were running three minute rounds of Rondori and we ran quite a few of them. And you know, during that round, every three minutes we'll stop and the uh, students on the mat, the athletes can then you know, take a quick break for about a minute, get some water, get a little rest, and we start another round of Rondori. We, we try to keep them going constantly and their coach is always timing when we start, when we stop the Rondori. So it's structured, very structured. And we also have, uh, and you'll see on the video, uh, several coaches walking around the mat, um, you know, supervising the Rondori. It's very important that Rondori be supervised. So uh, that is the one, two, three, that's the fourth phase of our training. The last phase is our cool down, our ending to the practice. Um, <clears throat> we'll get together after, you know, we're, we're done with the Rondori um, and we'll, um, you know, I'll make announcements at that time, any upcoming events, competitions, uh, uh, gradings, um, you know, any special events at the club, whatever it might be. Uh, and also that's the time we'll have a question and answer period, what I call a chalk talk. And uh, we'll maybe discuss some terminology used, some of the terminology we use that particular evening in practice or that day in practice, uh, or something else I may want them to, to know about some terminology or some history. That's where we t talk about some of the history of Judo and Jiu Jitsu, that type of thing as well. So that'll be the fifth phase of it. So, but so there's always a pattern. There, there, there are five parts to our workouts. And again, I, you know, I want everybody to make it clear, we're not doing this out of vanity. We're not saying we have the total answer on how every club should run their practices. People have asked me, how do you run your practices? This is how I run my practices. Okay, so just want you to know that. Um, since I had so many questions, um, you know, I said, well, this would be a good time to do it. Let's, let's make this video. Um, but I do want to stress here that, uh, you know, all the workouts uh, do have a common theme. Like I said here, I pointed this out obviously quite a bit. And that gives me that common theme, that common pattern, gives me room to work. Um, that I, I can choose different drills. We know we're going to be doing drills, but different types of drills. Everything is, is relevant to what we want to do, the goal that night. I try to have every practice, there's some kind of a, a goal for each practice, what we want to do. Um, you know, it may be something very simple, is just to get a, give them a good workout, do a variety of drills, or maybe something we want to work on a specific technique, or we're training for a situation. And again, I want to stress the video you're going to watch here is kind of a typical, and I put that in quotes, there is no typical workout, but this is kind of a typical workout. Um, it, it, is, it is geared for adults. The video you're going to see is all adults. Um, and then they're more what we call recreational or general training. Um, we, we have black belts, we have white belts, we have just general people want to show up on a Thursday night to practice Judo, Jiu Jitsu, and Sambo with me. Uh, now, there are, there are times when we will be training specifically, like in a training cycle uh, for a competition, and those will be different types of workouts. We'll be structuring them differently. But tonight, the, the video you're going to see here on the, the tonight's practice, on the Thursday night practice, is kind of a typical workout. So with that all being said, um, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I hope you get something out of it. Again, we make no claims. This is how you should train. People have asked how we train. This is how we train. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the video and uh, thanks for tuning in. Right, one to the left. 
an active brake bolt here. Okay, this is really good for him. It's not really for me, it's for him. So what's going to do? We're going to like to do a spin and scratch and spin and pin. So here it is. Sleeve, lapel back here, or the, the collar back here, the jacket. I put my heel here, and he's just going to do a good brake fall. I spin him, and this is a good brake fall. Okay? Do one on the right, then I come here, and I then I do one on the left, and you do a left side brake fall. Okay? Alright, so can I have you guys do one real quick? Okay, do one right, one left, and then just take turn. Okay? Keep it right up. And then, and then change the turn on the right. Okay, so watch how to do it. Break ball. We'll do some rolling ball in a bit. And right now, let's do that. Let's do um, one right, one left, three rounds of that. Okay? Do a fairly quick work. So go ahead, get a partner, start drum. And there you go right there. Real good. Okay, one left. Emphasize. Good break ball. Good kitty. Good kitty. You want to jump into these guys? Then you just spin it over, so you break one. That is exactly what I'm going to do. Jake is here, okay? All right. His job is not to let Mike have that ball. Okay, now, you know, what Mike can do, he can get past his legs and his guard. He can snatch that ball, take it away from him, okay? And his job is not to let it. Only thing Jake can't do is roll over and, like, hide and go turtle, you know, and hug, you know, go fetal or something. You've got to actively defend that ball and keep him from getting it. So that's what the drill is. And if Mike takes it away from Jake, you know, and then switch. Okay, so Michael has the ball, it's Jake's turn to take it back from him. Let's go several rounds of that. So let's take a look at how you do it, okay? Ready? Go. Yes, yeah, he's immediately, see what you're doing? Good math skills you're developing? Look at that. Gets him that ball. Gets it. He's taking that ball away. Jake's giving him a fight. That's beautiful. There you go. Okay, good. Man to be. Mike's turn to guard the ball, okay? Got that? Team up. Do that very good. Stay there, guys. Be there. Give yourself room. We've got a lot of space in here. Use the mass space in that, guys. So use your space. Here. 
Okay, you got it. Ready? Okay. <laughs> If you get it back from now, if, if it's like a really long time and your partner can't get it away from you, give them a little slack, let them have it so you can take turns doing it, okay? All right, go. Let him do it. Keep working, smash those legs. Get that medicine ball. Switch out. You haven't got to do yet, switch out. Do the first roll there. Okay, keep going now. Keep going. Get that medicine ball. Oh, nice touch. Nice That's nice. I like that. Yeah, that's it. You get the arm right, you're going to go for the ball. That's great. All right. And team up. Tell you what, let's start one on your knees, one on your butt. So one fight, open guard, one on your knees. The one on the butt. Okay, we'll go a minute round. We'll go a minute round. If you get the sub, switch positions. Good? All right. One minute starting now. Go. So here's a drill we do often. We do three one minute rounds, or sometimes five. But we've been drilling pretty hard on some other things right now, so we're just going to go three one minute rounds with the guys tonight. It's just Mewaza Rondori, ground fighting Rondori. We can start in any position, and we often do. Sometimes we'll go through on knees, different positions to start. We may even put them in specific positions. But we generally do this in a, in a general setting where one is on the knees, one is on his buttocks, and uh, they work from there. Relatively small group tonight. We have about six or eight active. This is our uh, this is our recreational right, basic skills adult group. Okay, so I'm not gonna switch, get a new partner. Okay, we'll do one more round after this, guys. This is the second of three rounds. Second of three rounds. So team up. Ready? Set. Derek, are you timing or you want me to pick it up or is Don timing? Yep, I got 15 seconds. Okay, he's timing, guys. Okay, last of three. This is your last round. One minute. New partner. Derek was up there looking at the clock on the wall. We use that 
generally for a timing measure, a timing method. training in the uh, boxing in the background on the other side of the gym. There's going to be some banging there. Sorry about that noise, but that's uh, what happens in our, in our gym here. So this is a drill we do often. We generally try to go for the submissions, but we could end up in some pinning and some osaikomi situations as well. But it's, it's ground fighting. It's a minute. Newaza. One minute, we try to have a fast tempo, fast pace, and uh, let, him, let him drill on it. It's a controlled Rondori type drill. Newaza, ground fighting Rondori. And a lot of times we do uh, coach's time. Could be a minute, could be a minute 10, could be 50 seconds. We try to keep it close to a minute if we can. Sometimes they go a little longer than one minute, but that's okay, it's good training. <laughs> okay, Mate, we'll call it there. <laughs>
get down. Bend the knees more than bounce. Slide, don't bounce too much. Don't unbend. Bend it all the
couple of steps because nobody's going to be that dumb to take that many steps with you. you might even just take one. So work with that, okay? So it's a little bit of a which you come and move back. Get your partner down and back twice, and after this, we'll take a break. Walking into it, literally walking into the throat. They don't make any stopping. Walk them right into it. it flows right past, and that's it. That's it. Area. Just walks right into the technique. Okay, guys, what we'll do here now is we're going to work on Jujigatami. You know, we like to do that a lot around here. And any way you want to get into it. But specifically focus on one thing. Like if Derek says, tonight I'm going to work on my head roll Jujigatami, work pretty much the whole drill on that, okay? Mike will say, no, I want to do hip roll, I want to do spinning, some other style, spinning stretch, whatever. Whatever it may be, work on that specific setup for that, for that Jujigatami setup. And you know, why don't you do one or two, he'll do one or two. Total cooperation, it's a skill drill. Just work on it. We'll give you a good three to, three to five minutes to work on it. Spend a lot of time. The goal here is to get a lot of repetitions of good, solid, clean Jujigatami techniques, okay? And, you know, and, and no fighting, just, just good cooperation. All right, let's go ahead and team up. And get lots of reps in, a lot of repetitions. So have at it, go get them. Go, three, two, one, go. All right. And the idea here is, everybody, to get lots of repetitions on a specific skill. And that's what this is. This is a classic skill drill. Sometimes we, we may do this with minor resistance, but the idea here is to just work lots of repetitions. In this case, Jujigatami. And most everybody here has had some good experience with it, even some of the newer beginners. So we are just working with letting them have their choice on how they want to do uh, their Jujigatami drill. So basically what we're going to do here is this drill for, I'll probably time them anywhere between three and five minutes tonight. Because of my lesson plan, I have things set up for it. I can give them a little longer and I, I want them to spend a little more time working on their Juju. So we'll probably give them the five minute round tonight of just lots of repetitions. And again, hopefully in that five minute round, they'll get you know several dozen or more uh you know setups or you know actual full applications of jujigatami as you see the guys are doing right here kind of focusing on them because they they're going right back at it so this is a skill drill we do often and we'll do these with any number of techniques it could be in this case jujigatami could be triangle chokes it could be breakdowns and whatever it may be in this phase we'll be doing some more newaza drills like this later with some strangles and probably just that, sometimes we even work, a lot of times work leg locks as well. But tonight we may not, soon because we're, we are running out of time on some things. So anyway, there we go. And they'll be doing more of this, and they'll be doing about a full five minutes of this drill. This drill here, 
we're going to just do, uh, just like we did on the Jujigatami, uh, I'll do one or two, you do one or two, total cooperation, work on the skills. It's a skill drill. Let's work on strangles. Now, a lot of you are skilled enough to know, I don't have to tell you the specific thing to do, but you know, so, you know, Mike may want to work on, say, triangles, Sankaku Jume, work, but pretty much stick with that. Derek may want to do some rolling lapel chokes. Whatever your choice is, take turns, work on lots of repetitions. The goal here, we'll just go this one about a, let's go a three or four minute drill here, okay? Because we are kind of running short of time, so we need to do that. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And um, I do one, you do one, maybe every two we can switch out. Okay, go get them. Just work on it, cooperate with each other, help each other out. Remember, we want to go through it, a lot of repetitions. Don't, don't stand around and talk about stuff, really get at it, okay? So go ahead and team up and let's work. Three, two, one, go. All right, let's do it. All right. So, what we'll do in this drill is uh, I'll do one or two, you do one or two. No resistance, we're just working skills. There are times we do resistance drilling, situational drilling, more competitive type drilling. Uh, but in the general practice tonight, we're just doing uh, a lot of repetitions with uh, as skillfully as we can. What we're looking for is good technique, good skill, and a lot of repetitions of that good skill. Okay, and this is also gives you know, some of the more advanced guys like you're seeing here, you see uh, Derek and Mike, they're, they're good black belts. This gives them a chance to work on things they like to work on that we may not be working on a lot recently. But it also gives the newer athletes time to work on basic skills they need to work on too. So if everybody has something out of this drill that's specifically for him or her. You see over here, Sandy is working with Michaela. Sandy's a very experienced black belt. She's helping Michaela. And there's a really nice, skillfully done rolling kataha jume. You can see him drilling here. I'll turn out back. You can see him. So basically, going to be doing this about three or four minutes. We're running a little short of time. I normally have him do the full five minutes on this drill. But right now, we'll just probably just cut it down to about four minutes because we still have some other things we need to do tonight in practice. So, anyways. Uh, very often we also, because we do a lot of Shingitai Jiu Jitsu and also Sambo, uh, we will be working on leg locks as well uh, tonight. Um, well, actually we may do that tonight. We may drill on some leg lock drills because they're so important to what we do. So we really like the leg locks as well. So after this uh, round of uh, strangled and you know, Shimei Waza techniques, we uh, probably will go to our leg lock drilling. And after that, we'll do some uchikomis and full throws and uh, start finishing out the practice. So there you have it. This is a uh, phase of practice where they're doing a skill drill on, uh, in this case, Shimei Waza. Okay guys, good drill, good drill. Let's finish out one more skill drill. Let's work on your leg locks, your lower body submissions, okay? You have one you like, your favorite. Let's really focus in on that one tonight. Some nights we may do one, more than one or two, but let's really focus on your favorite lower body submission, whatever it may be. Maybe you wanna do, you know, wrapping them up like Kawazu Gaki or, or um, Ashigurami, you know, leg lacing from the bottom ankle pick to, you know, ankle lock, whatever you like, okay? Rolling, transition, to whatever you like, guys. You do one or two, your partner will do one or two. Give you about three or four minutes of that. After that, we'll take a break and we'll start some other drills, okay? So go ahead and leg locks, lower body submissions. Go get them, nice skill drill. All right, when you're ready, go ahead and start. So what, what they'll do now is uh, work on things they like to do. Again, in, in previous practices, we've worked on specific leg locks, ankle locks, lower body submissions, and here's their chance to practice them. This is the time where they practice the things they've already worked on, and they get lots of repetitions, and you know, drill on it, just drill on it. And a lot of times, the best coach in the room, we always say, is your training partner. 
So while you may not have a long, protracted discussion on something, your partner may say, hey, try this, try that, and he, you can do that. You'll follow that advice. He may give you some things. He may say, look, that wasn't hard enough. Try moving to left, moving to right. He may give you that advice. That's what this drill's about, too. So it's, a, it's got an open-ended drill, but it's still a very specific skill drill. I guess that's a contrary in terms, but um, we are specifically working on skills, but I'm giving them a choice to work on the skills they want to work on. So that's basically what I'm saying. Here. So we'll do this about three, four minutes. Again, we're running a bit short on time tonight because we want to do some uh, other drills a bit later, but uh, we know we go about a five-minute drill on this. We'll just go about three or four minutes tonight. So it's uh, just a skill drill for lower body submissions. Here's the drill. I'm gonna hang in just for a second. Mike's on elbows and knees. Here's the drill. Okay, I'm gonna do one to the right, one to the left. Start here. I'm gonna hook, get behind him. Get the hooks in, hooks in. Flatten them out. Be in position to go Hadaka Jume. I just wanna get behind him, break him down. Get in position to go for the choke. I'll go one on the right, one on the left. He'll do that to me. Okay. We'll go five rounds there. Okay. But work efficiently in your movements. Remember when you go by him. If, when, I, when I go by Mike and I want to say come this way, when I come around here, I step back and remember my first leg is this from here. I don't stand here and loop it over. I get my, get my hooks in quickly, hook, hook, right now. Because I want to get those hooks in with the legs as quick as I can, okay? One to the right, one to the left, he'll do the same thing, we'll go five rounds of that. Right? Team up, start drilling. <laughs> It's cooperation, bro. You just want to get there and work on it. Good fast breakdown. Be efficient. No, don't take your time. You got to you take your time to do it in a hurry. Right here, so I'm going to have you work on one grip is double lapel, 
on the sleeve here and just control the shoulders. You want to control the shoulders and you stay with them for one go. The other one, I want you to dump the wrist in. And don't let go of those wrists. You've got hooks here. These, your legs aren't just your only hooks. Your hands are your hooks too, right? So hook them at the shoulder, control the shoulders. When I control his wrists, now I'm controlling his whole arm as well. You know, you might be able to, you know, wrist and tail or whatever, but do a little bit of each. Like one round, I'm going to hold here, I'll time you. Get your legs to Yeah, my stomach double, double, double wrist. Like this. Always controlling your tools, all right? The next round, I might double your pelt. Okay. <laughs> here you go. Your choice, either meat hook him, meat hook him like this, or like this. I like to meat hook him because I can start working other stuff from there. So yeah, it's a good point, Joe. Thanks for pointing it out. So if you want to thumb hook them, that's okay. I always like to meet hook them. Right? This way, or this way, right? I'm going to be holding him for about 30 seconds. His job is to you know, give me about 50% resistance. Okay, my job is to use my feet to control the feet and manipulate, never cross or push the ankles. Just keep tying, you might have to tie them up or whatever, push them back a little bit, but keep those hooks in. Keep your hooks in with your hands too. So it's a double hook drill. Okay, it's a double hook drill. Alright? So we'll go 30 second rounds. Let's go the first round. We'll do uh, grabbing the lapels. Okay? I'll get you to do that. The second round we'll be grabbing the, 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 the arms. Okay, the wrist. Alright, so get your partner. Okay. And I'll time you. Each person will get a turn, so give yourself space. Get your hooks in. Again, after this, we'll take a little bit of a break. We're going to go really well. All right, you ready? Here you go. Keep control. Work on control. That's the point of the drill. Work on control. Okay, keep moving the name of it. Roll a little. Keep moving.
right in there pretty quick for the bed on one. That's a pretty sour. There it is all smiles when I look over there. Okay, so let's do this drill. We're gonna get the pads out. Okay, we'll get the crash pads out here. And we're gonna do some Uchikomi drilling. Do some Uchikomi up to the line and then throw on the crash pad. And come back and your partner will do that to you. You'll you know, do maybe six, seven Uchikomi. Maybe five, six of them actually. Make a nice clean set, you know, say 90s, whatever it may be. And then finish with a throw actually on the crash pad. So let's get the crash pads out. Let's line up a nice long line here. But we got the two crash pads. Put them next to each other, lengthwise. Okay. You guys want to help them out there? Crash pad uh, workers. Yeah. Here's the drill. Uh, can, can, can you throw? Are you show okay? Okay. So here's the drill, guys. Okay. Derek's gonna bring Mike down. Maybe three, four, five inch Chicomi. Nice. Say say that. This is no. This is two match. No, it's two match. Two match. And he comes back, step in. Okay, he's got time for another one. Step in. Oh, he's got the throw. Good. Then Mike will do that to Derek. Okay? So, you know, you have time. It's kind of a short man here, but maybe three, four, five in Chicomi. Fit him in. And you want to do a good full oral Chicomi. Just good, clean, get the good hip rotation, get the body in there. It's like you're really going to throw him. You do everything and pull the trigger. Okay? And when you get to the mat, pull the trigger. Throw him on the crash mat. Okay? Let's go several rounds of that, okay? And just take turns with each other. You may have to work in different body, body types, body because of size difference here. But let's go ahead and partner up and let's start working the crash pads. Okay, let's go ahead. Would you call me a crash pad from? Go ahead. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Let's go ahead and team up. Let's get at it. Let's get at it. Okay guys, all right, let's get the crash pads out where they're far apart from each other. 
let's get two teams. Let's get like big people and shorter, lighter people get on different pads. We're just going to take turns throwing the line and crash pad throwing. So um, let's put this pad out here, this big one that, that Eric's by. So can you pull that out there a bit, big guy? All right, let's get a form. Let's get uh, like Mike and Derek and Michaela. Why don't Jacob, you come on over here with this line and uh, we'll get over there. You, you bigger guys, get over, maybe grab the other pad. What's going to happen is, so say Derek's first in line, he'll take everybody in the throw, in the line. Okay, and he'll just keep throwing, and when he does everybody, then the next person comes in. Let's go a whole bunch of rounds of just throwing on the crash pads. That's what we'll be doing now, okay? So, there you go, team up. Is it two for What's that? Is it two for or one for Let's go two for Let's go two, two rounds, because there are only, only four, only uh, with three people, so he can only, now he can, instead of doing only three throws, he can do six throws. Yeah. yeah, there we go, good. All right, then uh, I guess Mike's turn to be next. And we'll just do lots of crash pad throws. And again, work on whatever you want. Pretty much stick with the same throw through the whole drill, guys. Let's go ahead and work your moves. Who's doing his Osoto Toshi there? And it's, yeah, nice move. So I'm focusing here on this particular group. And what we'll do is the, the goal here is to get a lot of repetitions on pretty much your favorite technique, get a lot of power into the throw. Well, we could be doing it without a crash pad, but with a crash pad, it does help soften the fall. And it allows the uh, thrower, Tori, to throw even harder. So you see you have the various degrees of skill. Jake's the green belt working on his moves, and so that's it. See, Derek's giving him some coaching right there on, on the pad. So that's what it's all about in practice. So you see this crash pad drill? Throwing a crash pad drill. It's so lots of repetitions. drill is to get a lot of repetitions, full power into the throw, and each time should be a throw for a good cleany pawn, every, every throw. Good skill, good follow through, good finish. Again, some of you out there may want to do this without a crash pad. You can do this drill without a crash pad. However, we can do a lot more throws in safety uh, without uh, uh, you know, by, by uh, using the crash pads. So it's just a crash pad throwing drill. One of many. There are a lot of different crash pad throwing drills. This is just a pretty basic one, one of many. Thursday night at the Welcome Mat Training Center. And this is our Rondori round. We've been already going about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. We got this group down here going Nawaza Rondori primarily. And up here is more of the regular stand up. They're starting standing, but they can do Nawaza round fighting the Rondori. Now, tonight we're working primarily on judo because a lot of them are training for a judo competition or just more, this is more of our judo night as it is. And uh, some nights we'll also include leg locks in the Rondori session because we do Sambo as well. But tonight's more judo focused, so that's the core of tonight's training. And you can see on one end we have uh, Coach Don Hinchcliffe down here running this practice. And we pan over here into the right. 
promising uh, coach Sandy Harrelson is somewhere around there. She's working with somebody, and Derek Darling can't see him from Paul. So you have plenty of supervision on the mat. And Ron Dory should always be supervised. There should always be a purpose for Ron Dory. Uh, you don't just get on the mat and start beating the snot out of each other. You have a reason for training. Uh, focus in here a little more, see the guys. And some of our new guys, they don't necessarily have their uh, full judo gi. And someone like Eric forgot his pants tonight, so we, we still practice. But you can see, it's a lot of give and take. And this is typical Ron Dory. You get it it's supervised. And this is more of a, a recreation level, as it were. They're not hardcore elite level competitors, although some of them do compete regularly. And uh, here regionally and locally. You can see. Uh, so that's what we're looking at here. This is a typical night of Ron Dory at the Welcome Mat Training Center on a Thursday evening.